stroll through the basics of WMS. We're going to talk about uh, some of the more generic items we've got to talk about in um, what is warehouse management. Just kind of look at defining those next few big steps. What it will take to get you up and running, how you can build a case for WMS, and how you can improve your existing WMS system uh, as you, uh, you implement new features and uh, really become more aggressive about your warehouse system. And more importantly, why choose the WISIS WMS system for your WMS platform? So what is warehouse management? Warehouse management, generically defined, it's everything that controls inventory across a particular location doing any of those tasks. And those tasks can be very wide ranging. When we look at a warehouse management task, we have all of the inbound functions such as purchases, inventory being transferred from one location to another, maybe sending and receiving product from an outside processor, all of your internal processing, so picking, packing, inspecting an item, maybe doing an inventory count, assembly, storing those items, transferring, replenishing. And of course, finding the items becomes a greater um, efficiency. There's a greater efficiency in finding and shipping all of your products on customer shipments, transfers, and RMA. So why WMS? There's a lot of business pressure focused directly on you know, on-time delivery, not shipping too soon, not shipping too late anymore, a lot of customer compliance issue. You need to have a better inventory accuracy. Maybe you can't find items in a warehouse easily. Maybe you're growing the number of items you have, and you have to have a more efficient way of finding those particular items. Or more importantly, how can you lower the total cost of managing your entire warehouse? How can I reduce my inventory and increase my fill rates? Or even how do I improve the efficiency of what my employees are doing? Generically speaking, we look at a WMS system. There's uh, a pretty common chart called the, um, the automation spectrum. On the left side of your screen down towards the bottom, you've got the manual perpetual inventory using manual paper and pen. And as you go through, and get away from those manual systems, your velocity and the number of transactions you can process in a given period of time will speed up exponentially to the point where you get those barcodes to get those things in in a more real-time fashion or to the point where you get to real-time and your warehouse management solution becomes a real execution system all the way up to true automation. So on the low side, we've got the paper and pencil. Wysis likes to consider ourselves to be very flexible. So we can basically become your beginner barcode warehouse management solution, or we can move our way towards that true warehouse management where the software is going to guide your employees as to how to function, to being able to use our developer products to talk to machinery and equipment. But definitely our sweet spot is right in the middle with the barcode and warehouse management sectors. So in your internal organization, what's the easiest way uh, to build a case? From doing this for, for a lot of years and having to sell the concept of a warehouse management system, the easiest thing to do is begin by assembling a team. It should be a group company project. It should go from your warehouse managers to your purchasing folks to your IT across the board. It's important to have a wide variety of opinions on how things should be able to be done. You need to analyze your costs and benefits to make sure that you accurately know where you're currently at with what you're doing today, what is the cost of doing business. Establish a stakeholder value. So you have all of these people assembled on your team, but what does in the end, what, is, what do they gain from doing this type of uh, enhanced system? What kind of efficiency will you gain? More importantly, what kind of economic justification do you have? And in the end, you need a clear ROI. One of the nice things that was provided to us is this chart. It's really a matter of, of guiding you through the process of trying to look at your warehouse from a macro point of view and start to focus down in on what are your key goals? Where is your shareholder value? And if you follow this chart through, you start on the left and basically start breaking it down into smaller areas 
until you find your impact area where you want to go. So do you want to increase your productivity, maybe decrease staffing, or improve how quickly you turn inventory? Do you want to reduce the cost of distribution? All of those different fixed costs and variables can be gone through with, with a lot of detail. And you just really need to look at what you want to accomplish, because with all of these projects, there's a great deal of flexibility. So generically speaking, with a WMS project, we would look to improve the warehouse functionality. So it's basically to increase efficiency for all resources. When we look at warehouse efficiency, we can break it down into three categories. Worker productivity, resource utilization, and inventory utilization. So when it comes to worker productivity, maybe they have trouble finding items in your warehouse. And it comes down to, can we automate some of those processes to reduce error and to help expedite the process? Maybe optimize how quickly something gets handed over from one employee to the other. Or more importantly, find a more efficient route through your warehouse by directing an employee where to go. When it comes to resource utilization, it's how can I shrink the processing time? Can I better utilize my overall space in my warehouse? Can I change the flow and direction to help better utilize all of the resources I have in a more timely fashion? And of course, inventory utilization, the one the accountants love. How can I lower my inventory carry costs? How can I bring the costs down? How can I streamline my material flow to lower the cost? How can I reduce my inventory obsolescence? And how can I quickly replenish all of my inventory to maintain the speed and efficiency across all processes. We're going to switch gears a little bit and start to talk about WISIS and who we are. WISIS was founded in 2004 uh, by Bruce Hollinger. He was the original founder of Macola. We're proud to be an exact Macola Solutions partner. We have over 200 customers and we truly have one mission and that's to extend the life cycle of Macola using real-time technology based on the latest Microsoft.NET technology to help bring a superior, quick solution to the Macola community. So why WISIS? Well, WISIS has a few unique things about us. We believe in a true real-time philosophy, meaning we believe every transaction occur should occur when the transaction occurs. So Macola should be updated the moment the person removes an item or, or touches an item. We believe that validation should be in real time, meaning when an employee scans an item and if they're trying to pick an order, it should tell them that they have the wrong item on the order. McCola's database should be kept completely up to date at every step along the way, so you have a real time overview of everything going on in your warehouse. We believe we offer a truly flexible solution. Out of the box, our software comes with a tremendous number of configuration options. We prefer to be more definable on the software process versus a predefined process for your business. We want to be adaptable. Our solutions are built on top of our uh, WISIS Agility and Form Studio tool sets. All of those sit on our business objects, which we'll talk about again in a minute here, which are going to allow us to rapidly change our product to really give you a unique, tailored solution for your business. We like to think of ourselves as a very innovative company. We have no green screen terminals here for running through your business. We run in a full Windows environment, allowing for advanced, icon-driven interfaces to maybe help bring a language or learning barrier so your employees can quickly and easily learn to navigate the software and interact and update those systems in real time. And most importantly, we think we have a powerful solution. We have an advanced, scalable architecture. We have decades of experience across all of our employees, allowing us to bring accelerated transaction processing, even under the most demanding processes. If you guys want to look at some really cool, powerful things our users have come up with, I encourage you to check out our website. There's a lot of video testimonials out there about how users have scaled the product uh, even beyond the initial expectations when we were initially engaged the customer, it's really something fun to check out. Now back to that architecture. We like to think we have a superior architecture and how we're laid out. Your Macola database sits at the bottom of our solution stack. 
on top of that, we have our Macola business objects. Now, the business objects are key to our solution. The business objects are what talks to the Macola database and keeps it up to date. On top of that, we set our adaptable tools, our warehouse management handheld application tools, our desktop agility, process-driven applications, all sit on top of our SDK. What does that mean? Well, if we need to change how you manage your orders in Macola, we can make changes to the user interface of Macola of agility very quickly and easily. So if you maybe need to pick your orders in your warehouse in a slightly different way than another customer, we can quickly and easily adapt our applications to your process without having to rewrite the entire underlying application, meaning the Macola database is constantly maintained. So all of these rapid changes, what does it mean? Flat out. Our business objects are there to maintain the integrity of your Macola ERP solution. So when we talk about warehouse management, we like to think about the Weiss's warehouse. As Bob mentioned earlier, the Weiss's warehouse covers so many different areas, including something that's not listed here, the front office, which we'll get into a little bit more detail about a little later on. So we are going to manage everything from receiving and label printing to put away, inventory cycle counting, issues, receipts, transfers, Maybe manufacturing, maybe you need to pick raw materials to send that over to manufacturing, or even real-time production, to shipping and material staging. Maybe pallet management, or maybe you want something a little more advanced, like a directed pick tour. All of those things culminate in our shipping solution, to where for some of you guys, our shipping solution would offer UPS, FedEx, U.S. Postal Service, LTL, and direct EDI integration kind of bringing the entire process together. Some of the latest innovations in the last couple of years for Weiss are we've introduced license plate number support. So with traditional WMS, you'll automatically track all of your information with a barcode scan, followed by maybe another barcode scan, and some data entry to make sure. So if you have an item which has been, you would provide the item, the bin, and the quantity with traditional transactions. With a license plate, we allow you to simplify that with a single barcode scan. One barcode scan can maybe cross multiple boxes sitting on a pallet. So you can transfer everything on a pallet with one barcode scan, saying, I'm moving this pallet to bin A1. And best of all, all of it's fully integrated with most of the Macola EDI providers. The net gain, we're going to improve efficiency, accuracy, and tracking while reducing the amount of data entry by around 80%. Another core feature of the Weiss WMS system is our automatic compliance labeling. I hear all the time customers tell me that they're getting complaints from customers because labeling isn't quite what the customer expected that they require someone to go in and find a specification for a customer to make sure that they have the right label. Well, with our software, we have a repository system which allows you to link maybe an ASN label, a license plate, a manufacturing label, receiving label, etc., directly to a customer, an item, a product category, a customer type, or a material cost type. So as you transact with these different items inside the system, we're constantly checking to make sure, does this go to customer A or does this go to customer B? And making sure that the labels that print out are effective and in the correct format every time. When we come over there, one of the culminations that brings everything together is not only doing the transactions in real time, but having real-time access to all of your business information. So you can answer these questions quickly and easily every time. Where can I find my inventory? What items are slow moving? Where are my cycle count variances? Do I have enough bin space? Am I using that space well enough? How quickly am I turning my inventory? And is there a way that I can improve my quantities? So all of that together, by bringing the handhelds in real time, 
to our Agility desktop application, we're really trying to allow you to have real-time transactions flow through and give you an overview so you can set measurable targets, create performance-based metrics, and continually evaluate the performance of your warehouse to make changes and innovations in your own organization. We're going to switch gears here now to where I'm actually going to bring up the software here, and we're going to actually walk through the basics of WMS and some of the more advanced features. We're going to jump over here today and we're going to huddle between a few different pieces of software. We're going to start off by going into our handheld software and we're going to begin by receiving some material uh, from a purchase order. Everything I'm showing you today was created inside of our Form Studio architecture, so our Agile Development Studio, meaning little things like names on forms and maybe the order in which things appear on forms can be changed quickly and easily without the effort of completely reprogramming a form. We're going to start off by going into PO Receiving. Our PO Receiving screen, like many of our screens, is laid out in a pretty standard fashion. Down at the bottom, you'll see usually a Save or a Process button, a Close button, and a Clear button. The clear button simply will take you back up to the next clearable field every time. Anytime you see on our order entry system three dots, that means you can click a lookup button and scroll through the various orders. Of course, every field in our system is barcode enabled. So we could type in an item, we could look it up, or we could scan a barcode. So when I go ahead and scan in our order, it'll immediately bring up some information. So I brought up the vendor number and the vendor name. In this case, it's mine. Next, we'll go ahead and scan or enter in our item number. We could also look up the item number and customize all of the different lookups so that you only see the information that's prudent to you. So on the screen, you'll notice that we have a unit of measure of each, and we currently have a thousand pieces on this purchase order to receive. So we can go ahead and receive our first hundred pieces. When I go ahead and hit the enter button, it's immediately going to save the transaction and begin to print our labels. I'm going to go ahead and select my printer, and momentarily a label will pop up. So a generic label is printed in real time and sent directly to the printer. In this case, I have it sent to my screen just for illustration purposes. Anywhere in our software you need to print a label, the same process can be followed. A transaction completes, a label can automatically be printed, and of course it doesn't have to ask you what printer to print to. We'll go ahead and receive a couple more just to complete out the purchase order. I'll receive another 800 and go through the exact process again. Once I've completed my PO receiving, I have these items. Now in this particular case, I received everything to a bin on my dock. So now that I've got everything sitting here, that I've unloaded the trailer, I need to put those items away. So we're going to click our put away icon. And clicking our put away icon, we have the same situation we had before. We can scan a barcode, and it'll fill all the information in. We could key it in, and if we key in the wrong information, the field's going to turn red, and down at the bottom it's going to give you an error message telling you that you can't proceed. Or, of course, we give you the ability to look up what item is there and what quantity you have yet to put away. So when I go ahead and scan my item number, I'll go ahead and begin by putting the items away into various bins. So we'll go ahead and put our, move our inventory to A1, and we'll move 100 of those. We'll go ahead and repeat the process and move to bin A2, another 500. And you basically repeat the process until you've, your quantity available has been depleted and down to zero. Once you've gone through your put away process, all of your inventory has been transferred. Just to illustrate this, I'm going to jump over and show you our multi-level item view. Right from the handhelds, you can inquire on a particular item status just by entering in the part number. So when we enter in the part number, we can drill down in and see that in our finished goods inventory, we currently have 9,898 available. We have 100 on order. We can drill down in and see the bin level detail. So we can see that in bin A1 we have 200, A2, 500, and so on and so forth. 
from here, there's quite a few different options on basic warehouse transactions we can go through. We offer a basic receiving application, which would allow you to scan in your item numbers and your bins and enter in your quantity and complete a manual inventory receipt. This is essentially the real-time version of the transaction in Macola inventory receipts. On the opposite side, we have the exact same transaction for an inventory issue. We can scan or enter in our item number, look up our location to see what locations it's stocked in, we'll also look up a bin to see where we want to pull the item from, getting a real-time look at what bins and quantities are currently available to us. So I'm going to go ahead and select our bin B6, and I'm going to go ahead and remove 100 pieces. You can also type in a comment and go ahead and hit the Save button to complete the issue process. The screen will clear, allowing me to move on to the next item in the transaction. Simply moving an item between bins, we have our bin transfer application. Our bin transfer application, much like the inventory receipt and issue application, very simple, very quick to use. We simply enter in our item number. It'll ask us what bin we want to pull from, and of course we can drill down in to see what bins we want to pull from. We can enter it in, scan it in, and then scan the destination we want to move it to. I'm going to go ahead and move these to B5. When I scan the bin B5, you'll notice the message pops up. It's asking us if it's okay to put that item in there, because the item's never been in that bin before. Do we want to go ahead and add that bin? We can always click no and back off and transfer away from that. Or we can go ahead and enter in the quantity we wish to move. Once again, we're prompted for a comment. All of these things can be configured, turned on and off inside of our WMS setup application. As I mentioned earlier while we were going through our slides, there are numerous configuration options for each one of these items I'm showing you today. We're going to jump over and we're going to talk about managing inventory through a pallet. We're going to jump over to our palletization software, in this case, Pallet Builder. Now, palletization could happen on peer receiving or in manufacturing, or like in this case, we're just going to manually build a pallet so I can show you how the software will function. When I go ahead and hit enter, I'm going to be immediately assigned a new pallet ID. However, if I had an existing pallet ID, I can simply enter in the number to press enter, and we would just be adding inventory to an existing pallet. We'll go ahead and enter our item number, scan our bin, and the quantity we wish to apply to the pallet. I can continue to add additional items over and over and over again to this pallet, essentially allowing us to quickly and easily build multiple items on a given pallet. From here, this particular item is lotted. Now we can go ahead and look up the lot number, or we can scan the lot number. And we'll just add the number of items we're adding to a pallet. From there, the item will continue to add itself to our pallet. From here, instead of having to scan each individual item, as I just did to transfer it, we have our very simplified pallet transfer process. From here, we can go ahead and look up what pallets are available to us to transfer. We can sort them just like we can any other screen inside of the system. And we can go ahead and move these pallets to a new location. I just want to go ahead and select my pallet, 36. I'll go ahead and scan my bin to move it to. The screen will clear, and all of that inventory I just scanned on there will now be moved to bin B6. Those are the basics of how we can get our inventory palletized and how we can move items with palletization. But after all, putting all of these items in the warehouse, we really need to do something with them. So we're going to adjust our focus just a little bit, and we're going to talk about order management. So how in the warehouse can we, we pick our orders, see our orders, print a pick ticket, and send people out in our warehouse to go ahead and use our warehouse management system to quickly and efficiently pick orders. So when I go into our WMS pick management system inside of Agility, I have a lot of different things I can do here. So I'm going to go ahead and select all dates in our finished good location. When I click OK, it's going to go out to the database and check a lot of different information. 
to make sure that we have all of this information available to us in real time. I'm going to remove our filter down here. Now a couple of things I want to mention about virtually every screen inside of Agility. Agility is designed to be changed for each individual user to have their own customized version of the screen. So there may be things that I want to see that Bob doesn't want to see on the screen. So we can quickly and easily drag different pieces around. Maybe we don't deal with the promise state. By dragging the column down, I can remove it, and I can continue to customize my screen. We could maybe group by additional information. If we wanted to group by customer number, we could quickly and easily turn on our group by panel to where we could maybe group by customer or order date and continue to build an order management dashboard, giving us visibility into our orders. If I wanted to filter down to the order for the item we just received, I can simply type in the order number, and immediately I'm filtered down to the item in the order, and now I can drill down in to see that I have items available, and I can allocate more and, and fulfill a back order. So I'm going to go ahead and select the order, and go ahead and fill my back order. Once the operation of filling my back order is complete, we'll go ahead and print a pick ticket. Additionally, from here, if you'll notice down at the bottom, you can see all of my inventory levels across all of my various warehouses inside of Macola, and how much is currently available and how much is currently allocated, maybe the last price average cost, whatever you want to see. And once again, all of these screens can be customized. If I wanted to look at our sales order, rather than having to get out and go into Macola, I can simply click on the View Order button. The View Order button will quickly bring up a Agility version of order entry, so you can drill down in and take a look at exactly how the order looked when the order was placed in the system. From here, you can drill down in even further and see additional information on the item. Maybe if it was a manufactured item, you can see additional manufacturing detail. And even print a pro forma invoice or an order acknowledgement right from here. But we'll go ahead and select our order and print our pick ticket. As the item comes up here, I have it printing to the screen rather than the printer, but certainly this can be printed directly to your printer. You can always select as many orders as you want. They will print together in a batch. And using some of the more advanced features in our software, you guys can do multiple order pick tours. So you can essentially group all of your orders together and go out there and pick them at one time and then sort them for shipment. Once I've printed my pick ticket, we can go ahead and jump back over to our handheld software, and I'm going to show you the two most common methods of shipping today. So back on our main menu here, we'll jump back over, and we'll go to our shipping icon. From our shipping icon, we're going to just basically ship our order. So I've got my pick ticket here off the printer, and I'm going to go ahead and scan my order number. So in this case, our order number is 80. We'll go ahead and scan in our item number. From here, we'll go ahead and select the bin we wish to pull from. So we'll go ahead and pull from our bin A1 and enter in the 100 pieces we want to pull from A1. The screen will clear, allowing us to select our next item on the order. So we can continue to scan over and over and over again the various items until we fully fulfill the item on the order. In the event that we try to pull more than what's required, we'll get an error message telling us we're trying to ship more than what is requested. All of these things offer real-time validation. So if I go ahead and try to scan an item number which doesn't exist, I get an item does not exist error message. Once again, bringing you real-time validation. So no transfer will go to the Macola database without being fully validated and ready to go. We'll jump back over to some of our different methods for shipping. So from here, we're going to go over to our load pallet and pack pallet options. Our pack pallet options allow us to essentially build a shipment right from here. Now our pack pallets is the, the final step in our pick pack for shipping solution. So we could basically be creating a set of pallets which maybe have to match up to an ASN for a customer. So what I'm doing is we're building a shipment manifest. And this manifest will allow us to print paperwork, such as a bill of lading, a packing slip, or any other document that you could think of. The first step is, is I can add to an existing shipment by typing in the existing shipment number, or we'll go ahead and press Enter, and it will tell us that we created a new shipment. 
and it'll automatically create a new palette for us. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll enter in our order number. We'll go ahead and enter in our item number. From here, it's going to ask us from what bin do we wish to pull the item from, and however many we wish to pull. In that case, I've already fulfilled the order when I sh ship my previous transaction from bin A1. So we get our, our real-time notification that the bin would go negative. So once again, we're forcing all of those rules so that every time we do a transaction, Macola is up to date, and we can't have an error. So we'll go ahead and select our item number again, and we'll pull it from our bin B6. Once completed, it will complete and allow us to move on to the next item. The alternative would be, if we build all of our pallets in advance, we can use our load truck application. Now our load truck application will allow us to quickly and easily move one item on a pallet and just essentially take an existing floating pallet. So a floating pallet is just a pallet with items on it we're currently storing in our warehouse. So in using that, when we come in here, we simply will hit enter to go ahead and grab the next available shipment number. Upon hitting the next available shipment number, we'll go ahead and scan our pallet ID. So the pallet ID that we had from a few moments ago was 35. So when I enter in my order number and my item number to validate, we'll go ahead and continue by scanning our pallet. Justin, I think and your when screen the screen is frozen. clears the items. Justin, could you check your screen, please? Uh, yeah, let me stop it here, and we'll try again. You guys see my mouse move now, Bob? Looks good. All right, so on our load pallet screen, I'll start over here. We'll go ahead and press Enter to get our new shipment number. Scan our order number or manually enter in our order number, our item number, followed by our pallet ID. We'll go ahead and complete our pallet ID, and the screen should clear, allowing us to move on to the next step in the process. The next step in the process for shipping our more advanced shipping solution is to complete the order in our desktop system. So when I come back over to Agility and I select our PicPack 4 application, we come in here, we can go ahead and bring up our existing shipments. So I went ahead and built one earlier with a lot of different items on here, so it would be easier to illustrate for you the power of our software. So in this particular case, we have eight distinct pallets with various items on it. Now these items happen to be lotted, so there's a lot of different information that we can have here. You'll notice on the screen it tells us the quantity that's on each individual pallet. And of course you can drill down in to see what lot numbers are on each pallet. So all of these items were pallets I just previously created and went through the load pallet process to put it on the individual shipment. From here, we can click a few buttons and go ahead and print a bill of lading. We could print carton labels, pallet labels, any variety of those documents we talked about earlier. In addition to that, when I bring up the shipment we just created a moment ago, we have an LTL button light up on the left-hand side of our screen. When I hit the LTL button, this button does a lot of different things. So in this particular case, when I press the LTL button, I'm going to confirm ship the order in Macola. If set that way in our system, we could be also billing the order inside of our system. I'm going to go ahead and print off a bill of lading, packing slip, commercial invoice, maybe some export documents. It's really up to you what you print at this step. And we're also going to go ahead and update the exact EDI solution with the manifest of everything uh, on the pallet. So what items on the pallet, how many are on the pallet, maybe there are cartons on a pallet, all the way down to that nested level of processing, as well as the serial lot detailed information on here. When I go ahead and click our LTL button, it's going to go ahead and bring up our confirm ship screen allowing us to enter in some additional information for our bill of lading. So if we wanted to go ahead and enter in a weight or any other information, we can just continue to fill it in 
and then hit our print button. The information will get stored in the database for recollection later on. The information would also be transferred over uh, so that the EDI could see any of the additional fields that it would need in the event that it would need it. And then we just complete it by finishing and printing our bill of lading. Okay. From here, we have additional options inside of our system uh, that really don't fit into WMS, but we have a lot of different options inside of our agility system. I wanted to quickly mention, um, inside of order processing, we have a lot of different options for maybe managing the billing process or invoicing process, all as part of the standard transaction. So as your orders are completed in shipping, we basically are going to give you a dashboard. But it's an interactive dashboard allowing you to move in more detail with these orders and even maybe bill and print invoices right from the screen, saving you the time and energy of going into McCollum and doing the same task. We also have a large variety of reports and screens inside of Agility related to inventory. Um, inventory and cycle counting, which we did a webinar previously that we can share some links for. There's a lot of different information here to give you that overview on your warehouse. And I want to make sure and encourage everyone to go to our website and take a look at some of the uh, um, additional um, information available on warehouse management and our agility um, solution. So at this point here, we'll go ahead and turn this over for um, some questions, if anyone has any. We'll go ahead and uh, try to get you some answers here. Justin, there is a question. How about, uh, do you have a directed pick for WMS? How would that work? Um, we do offer a directed pick for WMS. Um, there's a variety of different ways it could work. And with anything in our software, if your business process dictates something specific, um, the software is capable of being uh, tailored to your individual needs. Uh, the directed picking essentially would look at maybe a bin allocation and make a suggestion based upon a bin allocation. Uh, but certainly some more, you know, if you were lotted, we could do more lot-centric FIFO um, style rules. It really just depends on um, what your individual preference is at your company. Um, and you'd work with our sales group and our consulting team to really, really find the best way directed picking would work for your organization. There's another question about uh, if, if they use some other type of shipping application, maybe Starship, could you actually take a pallet that Weiss has created with an LPN and transfer it, ship it over through Starship? You could certainly um, pull information into Starship, but we do not have a direct interface with Starship um, as of now. But it is definitely something um, we've had discussions about just at this point. Uh, we have our own integration. So that would be a check back with us in a few months and I might have a better answer for you type answer. But you, we could just say no, and then we could say that our shipping system is designed to ship those pallets easily. So maybe it's a, a case of looking um, at what Weiss's shipping can do versus Starship. Um, let's try another question. Anne, do you see a question out there? Um, the scanners we're displaying are fully touch screen. Um, you can interact with that usually with a stylus, your finger. Um, they also have a full 52 key keyboard. Uh, so it's really just a matter of what your preference is to interact with it. They're a very rugged device, they're fairly lightweight, and they're very easy to use. All right. Amy wants to know, um, when you were using the put away function on the handheld, if you were entering the bin or did it provide an available bin? Um, the question would be, what do you prefer? Uh, the software can be configured in either case. If you want it to recommend a bin, we certainly can provide a recommendation. Um, it is just that. Ultimately, where you put it um, is really defined on what you're physically doing in the process and not necessarily what the software is going to suggest. 
Maybe a, a question from the beginning, Justin. When you started talking about bins versus not, not having bins, you suggested it's good to start with generic or broad bins. Could you, could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, when, when starting any type of uh, warehouse management project, if you have a ton of space, it's going to be really hard to quickly and easily get up and running um, and saying what's in each bin very quickly. In a lot of cases, we, we suggest basically maybe taking and putting your inventory into larger buckets for a short period of time and then working your way into those more constrained bins. So maybe you divide it up by a room in your warehouse and work your way down to individual smaller locations um, as you get more, um, more in tune with your, your processes using the WMS solution. Thank you. The number of characters, I, I noticed somebody's asking, the number of characters we can enter for a location or a bin, um, that is limited by the bin um, numbering inside of McCollum. I believe it's eight digits. Can Weiss, um, here's Wayne Glass. How is, Okay. Uh, unit to measure conversion with the purchasing unit to measure versus stocking unit to measure. Um, our software is capable of doing those types of conversions on purchase to stocking. Um, the software actually will just do it out of the box. It will look at your um, stocking unit to measure and essentially do the conversion. Um, so the PO is received at the proper unit to measure and then your inventory um, on hand is updated with the proper quantity. Somebody wanted to know if, when I, when I do a transaction, does it write to the McCola audit trails? Um, everything is written in real time to the audit trails inside of McCola. So any traditional inventory transaction in McCola, you'll have the exact same identical record from Weiss's showing that the transaction was done um, by the user of the handheld versus the McCola user. Um, Tom um, Grant wants to know if WMS can be used for order product returns. We do have a return materials receiving application. Um, it allows you to receive um, pre-generated um, RMAs on the handheld um, and displace, displace the inventory um, upon receipt. Jasmine was asking if the pallets can be used to issue on the shop floor. Um, absolutely. Um, the pallets to us are just a, um, um, a bundling method, and the bundling method can be used to do a bulk style issue uh, to pop or shop floor control. And you can also produce to a pallet with an LPN. Um, somebody's asking how we compare to Process Pro. I apologize, I don't think any of us are familiar with that uh, process, but if you want to catch us offline, we're happy to take a look at it and see if we can't uh, help you with your evaluation. Justin, maybe, maybe you could suggest that how WISIS works with the McCola data model, because there are, there's probably a number of different WMS products out there that have their own database. How do, how do we deal with that? You know, what's very unique about WISIS is we only work with McCola. So McCola ES and Progression are it for our, our, our product line. Um, with that, as I mentioned during the PowerPoints, our people have years and years of experience with McCola. So when you do a transaction in our system, McCola and all the audits happen in real time. So there really is very little um, to distinguish a transaction done in McCola with one done inside of our WISIS solution. Um, that, that allows you to essentially have a very quick, agile, but auditable process with the functions you know today in McCola. So when you think about WISIS in, in the data model, McCola uses all the existing McCola tables. We don't have a separate inventory table that we have to synchronize or anything. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Um, the question here is, can you expand on how confirmed shipping works in a 
real company with both shipping and accounting. Um, essentially, in a confirmed ship environment, there's several steps of the process. Um, there's a shipping process, then a billing process, an invoicing process, and a posting process. In a confirmed ship environment, at the time of shipping, inventory is relieved from your system. Um, there are some offset accounts, basically. Um, and it's not until the item is billed and invoiced that all of those offset accounts are completely reconciled. Um, if you catch up with us offline, I'm happy to provide you with a uh, actual accounting level T-chart style of, uh, you know, debiting um, your cost of goods sold and crediting, um, crediting all that good stuff. But off the top of my head, uh, putting me on the spot, I can't remember exactly the account names. You can definitely use pallets through the shop floor. Can user-defined fields of Macola integrate into the business process with Oasis? Absolutely. Um, that is one of the wonderful things about being written on our tool set. If you need to record additional information, which maybe isn't in Macola, or you need to read additional fields which aren't on our generic forms, um, it's just a matter of going into our um, application and adding those things quickly and easily to the forms. All of our canned reports can be customized. Um, they're all provided to you. Um, actually, all the screens and agility, um, there's a lot of detail there. And if you have our design tools, um, Basically, you can go in there and change anything that you want to change. It's, it's non-programmatic, so you lay out a screen based on selecting, just like you would an access, basically, and it's, and it's connected at that point. Justin, here's a question from Patrick. He says, how does it lock orders when scheduling if we don't use the picking module in Macola? So maybe if, they, if they're not using pick tickets and they want to get an order to ship or something, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure I, I how to I think we're going to need a little bit more detail on that one. That one might be better answered off, uh, offline because I, uh, well, I can't. I guess the bottom line is we, we pick orders that are at status four. They don't show up on the gun unless they're a status four, which means the pick ticket has been printed. That's the way McCullough kind of works today. Um, are there tutorials on the Design Studio? Yeah, there's actually a pretty good size video library in print um, on the Agility Studio side of it. If you go to Wysis.com, uh, click on Support Documentation, you'll see a link to Agility in the upper left-hand side. Um, you click on that and you'll get uh, taken to the video library and documentation for those Design Studio applications. If you need additional help, don't ever hesitate to call and let our people know. There's actually four hours of Design Studio uh, tutorials, tutorial videos on the website. Um, how does the pick pack software improve efficiency compared to the UPS World Ship or Starship? Um, our UPS and FedEx integration and AS integration is all process driven. Um, so in the shipping demonstration I did today, I clicked on an LTL button. Um, if I was shipping UPS, I'd hit the UPS button. Uh, it would have me verify the weight, click one button, and I would get my UPS label. Um, so for us, rather than having to switch between a bunch of different applications, um, you're just going to click a button to say, yep, this is shipping UPS. These weights are correct, and there's your label. And uh, it does all the confirmed shipping and transmit the tracking numbers to ASN if that's a concern. Um, and all that information, of course, gets written back to McCola. Um, so the real difference of a world ship or starship is it's just we make it part of the process rather than having to um, jump back, go into a different software, fill in all the information there and import the information from there, um, and then print your labels and ship. Um, when transaction transaction to occur at all the same time, how is the response time? Um, we. I got only part of that here. Uh, system load response times. If you have 15 transactions to occur at the same time, how is the response time? Um, I'm going to answer that with a question in that it really depends on your SQL server and your own infrastructure. 
Um, but we've done a lot of things, even in the last two months, to really make sure we squeeze every last bit of performance um, out of our transaction code to minimize locking and to make sure our transactions go through faster. And uh, I think in most cases we're a lot faster uh, than the traditional Macola code. Uh, I see one here, um, uh, progression 76300 with SQL Server 2000. Um, we do work with 76300 and SQL Server 2000, but we really do recommend you bump up and uh, at least your SQL Server get it to uh, SQL Server 2005. I think you'll find the performance level is substantially greater on that platform than SQL Server 2000. Uh, Jeff Wilkins has a question, how much development work, if any, would be required to get work order parts to drop right into a pallet or batch transfer? Um, give us a call if you'd like to see that. I can actually show you how it looks when you manufacture directly to a pallet. Um, it looks very much like our generic manufacturing applications, if you've ever seen any of those. Um, we just add those extra steps that you say new pallet and, and there. So it, it's not a tremendous amount of, uh, of stretch to go to that palletization, uh, but it really depends on your project as a whole and what needs to be required, what type of reporting, what kind of labeling, um, all those things come into play. Justin, I see a question here. It says, do you have a way to check material to commit to a new order but not consume material already committed to other orders? Um, if you are using our products, we, one, will not allow you to allocate against, say, Oasis shipment already. So if you have a pallet already built and that pallet's assigned to another shipment or already has been shipped, uh, we, of course, are not going to allow you to do that today. The same holds true for manufacturing. If you're using our um, production issue application or shop floor issue applications, once um, the inventory is, is attached to the order, um, we're no longer going to allow you to uh, transact with that material. We're going we're gonna to make doubly sure that not only um, McCola sees that, we're also going to make sure that our handhelds see that and all the processes inside of our system. I suppose it's also appropriate to talk about uh, unshipping or unconfirmed shipping product if you wanted to take product that was associated with one order and unassociate so that you could ship it to another customer if you had to. You can always reverse through the process. Um, once you back out a shipment so it's no longer confirmed shipped, you can essentially uh, reattach a pallet or um, the item in the bin to another order and process them both forward. Not a problem. Justin, do you want to briefly discuss the concept of a composite transaction where we do multiple things um, upon ending some kind of, of an action? Sure. Um, we have something referred to as a composite transaction. And what that basically is, is um, let me try to paint a picture here because I'm not sure I'm going to do a very good job, but I'll try anyway. Um, with a composite transaction, you're doing with one commitment of a transaction, we could be doing multiple things. So. Um, <clears throat> we could um, press a button on a form, and the form would automatically create a pop order, release the pop order, issue material to the pop order, and report production against the pop order in one button push. So whereas all those things traditionally are four separate transactions, we can layer them. Um, once again, without programming using our, uh, our form studio and agility design studio, we can essentially layer those transactions one right after the other. Um, allowing them to flow through so the user has no interaction from the initial commit until the process is complete. And that can be done really with, with anything. It could be shipping from one location to another or maybe container style shipping where you want to transfer items to maybe a different location, um, receive them back in, off the water, receive them into a pallet, transfer them to your warehouse all in, in a couple of, uh, um, or a single button click rather.
Patrick had a question about back order handling. Um, if McCullough is set to reuse the same order number for the back order, does McCullough follow those same rules? It, Weiss follows all of the setup rules of McCullough. So one of the things we do is we um, take the McCullough, um, the business rules as um, unbreakable. So we, we look at those rules depending on how your McCullough is set up and um, we don't violate those rules. Thanks, Justin. Um, how do we get orders that have been picked and released to the DC um, if the customer wants to make a change to them? Um, generally speaking, once the order has been sent to the DC, if the picking process or shipping process has begun, the best thing you can do is pick up the phone and call, um, have them back out of what they're doing, and then we give you a process to reverse the pick ticket printing, um, correct the order, or you release it back to the warehouse and allow them to uh, um, take care of the order at that point. A lot of good questions here. Thanks, everybody. Let's, we've got a few more. Uh, we're coming up on the top of the hour, but I think we can squeeze a few more questions in. I have no idea if our UPS includes trade direct support. Um, I will find out because I just don't know. Uh, Weiss does not integrate with ShipGear. We have our own UPS FedEx in integration. Um, but if ShipGear does, it, it, but, more. but a lot of people do use Weisys to confirm ship on the handheld, a simple picking and confirm shipping. And if your process is simple, you can still use Starship or ShipGear. You can combine them if it's appropriate. Uh, Jeff asks, can transaction layering be used to convert the work order um, parts list to a pallet and transfer the pallet to a shop location? A um, little bit more to it, but yeah, I, I wouldn't see why that couldn't be done fairly easily. If there's any questions that I missed, if you guys don't mind reposting, then the list has kind of gotten uh, a little out of control. So if I missed any of your questions, I do apologize if you can. Um, repost anything that I may have missed or any additional questions, I'll be happy to grab them. Um, the webinar should be available in a recorded format uh, in a couple of hours, I would imagine. And uh, Bob will do his best to get all that information directly out to you. We'll have a copy of the PowerPoint and some notes and things like that. I usually take time to go through the Q&A and reprocess it, make sure we didn't miss anything. Well, I appreciate everyone's attention. We've had a really good turnout today. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, close now, and we'll keep in touch with you for further webinars. Thanks, everyone.